Hey everyone, Gil here at Camp Patton Family Compound. <sighs> wow. StreamYard did it to me again. Uh, this has happened twice where when I'm setting it up, it's supposed to get it's supposed to um, automatically default to 30 minutes from the time I'm setting it up, and then I just you know change it the time so it matches up right. <clears throat> well, this time it went for an hour and 30 minutes. So hey Michael. So I just changed the um, minutes instead of real. I didn't realize it was set for eight o'clock because it came up as uh, eight uh, uh, forty-five when I set it this up, and so I just changed it. You know, the forty-five to the end. Anyways, yeah, it should have been saying seven forty-five, and then when I changed the time, it would have been seven o'clock. But yeah, it screwed up here. Hey, our cabin in the wood. Hey, Scott. Scott, are you home or are you uh, commuting or are you still at work? Well, uh, tonight's uh, topic, we're going to talk about community gardens. Are they for you? Because not everybody has room in their yard for as much of a garden as they would like. Um, uh, he's still driving back to uh, California. Oh, you didn't get the message that uh, Newsom locked the borders and uh, no one's allowed to come in or out of the state. You're stuck. You're stuck up here, night. Back up. Hey, turn around. Come back at the Idaho. You're stuck up here, buddy. <laughs> uh, I just poked and find it, Scott. But yeah, the um, you know because a lot of people like Scott has a real nice garden in his backyard. <clears throat> And if you haven't had a chance to check out Hidden Valley Homestead, uh, check him out. He's got some good stuff going on there in his backyard. And uh, Steve, of course, there are trainers also, you know, whose home is down in, uh, let's just say, uh, I wish. Uh, howdy again from Devin, North Central Washington, a enriched uh, refuge. Uh, working in your garden. Cool. And I know, like, uh, Steve and Scott both live down there in L.A., uh, Southern, Cal Southern California. And they both are putting in gardens in their backyard. Uh, Scott's been doing it for a while. He has some nice uh, trees that are uh, pruned to go along the fence. And um, uh, Steve's been putting in some uh, grapes and some other plants and stuff. But realistically, for these guys, their backyard gardens, as good as they are, ain't going to cut it to cover what they really need. Last night on Just In Time Prepping um, for a Will's uh, live stream, we we're talking about, you know, homes, homestead, is that the, the future of uh, long-term food storage? And one of the things that came up last night was that um, suburban homesteaders, unless they got an, an acre or more, you know, really aren't going to be able to grow a lot of enough food to last their entire family for a year. Now, there's some people say, oh, on a quarter acre, I can do this and this, this. Yeah, that's the exception, not the rule. So the, 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 uh, it brings up the, um, the topic of, you know, well, where else can you grow? Community gardens is obviously the first answer that pops up. And the question is, are community gardens for you? So, you know, there are a whole bunch of different type of community gardens. And I just I just took a small sampling here. The guys this is going to be really quick. So, you know, here's one here by an apartment building where in their common area, grass area, they've turned it into a, uh, a community garden. They got each plot looks like they're four by eight um, uh, raised planter beds uh, raised on uh, two by sixes or two by eights. And so that's what they have for their garden there. And here's another one. Looks like it's a double stacked. Uh, uh, looks like they had two by sixes on the bottom and they've added two by eights on top, possibly. <coughs> and it's all laid out. Again, looks like four by eight little plots. And um, each one has in the corner of it. Let's see if I can get over here. Each one has in the corner of their, of the, of their, um, I'll raise planter bed, a little white tag saying whose it is. Hmm. Sorry, I'm drinking water. 
it's been windy as heck when I've been out working outside. It just dehydrates me bad. So, um, and you see, this is open to the street. No, no, it's not open to the street. There is a chain link fence running along the sidewalk and a chain link fence here in the foreground on the other side. So, it is somewhat protected. Hey, Kaylin. And so, this is another type of one, uh, set, a community garden is set up here. Um, the Paramore Community Garden. There's it has uh, looks like it's got wrought iron uh, fencing in the background and chain link fencing along the one side. Looks like it's an apartment building set up. And they, again, that looks like they have uh, six by eight um, raised planter beds, and each one has a yellow four by four post next to it with the name of whoever it is. Okay, this is. This is the other one from uh, shown here. These are also four by eights. Uh, the one here in the foreground that got strings across it, marking out where each of their pipe plants are. They're really going for con condensed. A lot of these are going really condensed on what they're growing in there, which means they got to add a lot of nutrients to it. Now here's what it looks like. It's um, two by eights or two by, it may even be uh, two by tens, three levels high here. And so, Again, you got a bunch of houses over there on across the street, and it looks like in the, a uh, little park area there, they've set up uh, their little community garden, and they got um, notices posted on all the ones. And here's one that's not quite so fancy, just a, uh, a community getting together in a, in a regular out garden type area. I pulled these all, just off, I just Googled uh, community gardens. And here's they got chain link fence up around here, uh, separating it from the apartment complexes, and they got several uh, raised planter beds. All right, let's. Uh, Kaylin's got a comment here about it. So, you know, one of my sisters used to have access to one occasionally. She'd pick me up to help her weed and harvest. Some of the plants that one were trained to initially grow was up a chain link fence. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the last picture. Nope, oh, there's another one. Here's one that's really kind of it's kind of spread out. Um, it's not as neatly organized as some of the others were. Better organized than some of the others were too. So they got the raised planter beds just uh, set up. Sometimes it's just uh, looks like they just have some um, round posts laying on the ground <coughs> for it. Others just like I got two by fours, two by sixes blocking off their area. They got, some have stepping stones going through the middle of them so they can get to, to, to uh, get to the middle of them. Little walkways. Okay, so let me go take that back up here. <coughs> Excuse me. The dust was really bad out there blowing. And so, yeah. Hey, Jehodak, how's it going? So, in one of the things that um, talking with several of the uh, several of the other channels is one of the reasons why we're talking we were talking about community gardens. Like I mentioned earlier, we're talking about it uh, a little bit about it last night, just for a li very little bit on um, just in time prepping's uh, Monday night roundtable. We were talking about you know homesteads are they the future of uh, food uh, storage? Well. The thing is, though, of what's going on in the world today, and I'm not going to go deep into the, into it. We're just talking about, you know, there are problems. We've heard about it. We've heard about the um, some of the uh, food processing plants being shut down. Uh, we've all seen the uh, back in uh, April and May the shortages at the grocery stores of not just food items but other items, but food items for those included in it. And so. Everyone needs, an, needs to be able to grow a garden. And if you're stuck in, a, in an apartment building, you need to have access to a community garden. And this is some, you know, something I think that those that need, need to have access need to contact their cities and um, their uh, city councilmen and stuff for their area and see about getting community gardens set up. Now, unfortunately, sometimes they're far and few between, and you got to drive a ways to get to it because there's, you know, land's a premium in the city. 
and there's you really just can't get good um, you know land to have a community garden on. So guys, what is your thoughts on community gardens out there? You know, let me know. You know, you know, if you didn't have a, if you don't have room to grow, is this something you might be interested in? And why uh, you guys are putting that up there? So also, the other thing is to find somebody that has. Ah, very good point, uh, Kaylin. Nice to have one that's close to the city bus stop. That way, people can ride the city buses to get there if they're near a city bus route. That's the other problem too. I'm taking a cough drop so I'm not coughing at you all the time. Um, one of the other things to do is check in is that if there are people, if you're in a little bit more suburban area and there are people that have larger uh, lots or even have, you know, like an acre or two, uh, like I'm in, in the city I'm in here in Idaho, I got a five acre lot. And we put offered it up to several people in town, but nobody was really interested because they didn't think there was going to be a problem with the food supply. And so, but my neighbor across the street, um, Curtis, he was helped spreading the word on his um, plot. He's tore up a lot of his grass area. He's got a big old mound of uh, grass dirt there. And he has uh, expanded his garden dramatically over last year. And he's uh, rehabbed his goat pen and he now has goats going as well. So. And that's something else. Yeah, that's a good idea, uh, Kaylin. Um, local prepper groups might be able to, uh, so it might, you know, might be a reason to join a prepper group, whether it's a, um, a community assistance group or a, a mutual um, assistance group, whatever you want to call it, um, but it allow you to grow, join. They have an area to have put in a garden. Yeah, it may be out of town, but um, there are things you can, you know, some of those can work if you do, if you're doing raised planter beds or, you know, on fields, you have everybody, you get everybody, you get several people of the group to join together to spend alternating days weeding and stuff. And you share, you plan it out, plan out your garden plot, which could be a, you know, if you have a prepper group, you're probably gonna have something like a 50 by 50 foot you can have a 50 foot by 50 foot garden plot that three or four families can go in together on, lay it out, and the different ones can go out at different times to work on it. That way, everyone's not out there all the time. Because, yeah, sometimes, sometimes weeding is a daily chore, depending on the weeds in your area. For me, with Morning Glory, it's a, it's a daily chore. All right, what do we got? Oh, Uncle Al's going to be joining us here. Hey, Uncle Al. Hey, folks. You always. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I uh, see what it's in. Rich says, uh, today I pray, uh, pray and others wake up, learn to participate when they can. I get a garden garden goods from in Council, Idaho, Community Garden. Have a. Council Council Idaho is actually where I wanted to go to, but my wife uh, I wanted to be near the grandkids, and my daughter and her husband were staying in eastern Idaho, and I wanted to be up by council. Actually, council is Adams County. I had some nice lots picked out up there, but she wanted to be over here, so that's why I'm over here instead of up over there. That's cool. That's true, Kaylin. Some weeds are at, weeds are actually good plants, like um, dandelions and others. Um, I have medicinal properties, but so far I have not been able to find anything good about Morning Glory. And the variety no. I have here sends roots down. Uh, they say twenty to thirty feet. Yeah, that's true. And uh, it just chokes everything else out. Right. So, do we have slides or? I already ran through the slides once. Oh, Lala Farm just came in. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, Lala Farms. And so, uh, yeah, I was just uh, the slides are really short. Um, but run through real quick again here. 
So it's just showing, you know, different way people do community gardens. So here's one where they got it set up next to the apartment building in the common greens area. They've put up like two by sixes. Uh, and it's each, each one is a raised planter bed that's uh, four foot by eight foot, it looks like. And here they got it double stacked and chain link fence all around it. And this is right out on the street. And here's one that's uh, they got, um, looks like a uh, eight by six foot uh, raised planter bed, single stack. Cool. And they got stuff growing up along the chain link fence in the back there. And there's a little bit larger one. Um, these also look like four by eight uh, single raised planter beds. I like the way this one in the foreground here did it with yeah, the uh, line, uh, line, string and stuff. That way they plant. Okay, they got this stuff here, this stuff here. And that way they can manage what exactly it is they're growing. Right. That square foot garden. Yep. And here's a triple stack one here set up in like in a, uh, it looks, I, I, I'm betting this is a, mer, a meridian strip between, uh, you know, you know, one road going one way that would go the other way, you know, right. type thing. And it looks you know, rather interesting. They got one, two, three, four, looks like five, uh, two rows of five that I can see with this. There's probably more behind that the camera didn't catch. Right. Um, if you go down to <coughs> Wyatt Farms, some community gardens, uh, they try to, the negative part is um, some people will do work, some people won't do work. Uh, I do like the raised bed idea, so each person has their own beds. Yeah. They try community gardens. I know Japan, not a problem. England, they went to allotments. Mm -hmm. For you people who are not European, allotments is some, similar to raised bed, but you get your own little plot of land to take care of and do work. Because during the war, that's World War II, that's yep. when they fought the real bad guys. Uh, everybody was fighting over uh, who will work on who, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. That was a big headache for the uh, Minister of Agriculture because he got mad. <laughs> There's a big speech on, on I think, YouTube someplace. Uh, yeah. Um, going back to the comment here. Um, The uh, the negative community gardens is you do all the work while others don't. Well, it, it, it depends on how the community garden works. If you have a, a, a plot in it, you're given a, a plot, like I showed these all these ones here, that's yours to work. No one else works it. Here in this picture that's up here now, it looks like, you know, you have multiple people, you have families working on um, an open area here. And so that's the problem with if, if some you know, decide they don't want to do much work. Um, And let's see, we'll go to the next one here. Um, a little over raised uh, planter, uh, planter beds here. And some open areas where there are no planter beds where they got right. squash and stuff growing. And then this is a, a really big one. This one looks like it's been around for a while. And so they got all sorts of different things blocking out their things. They got uh, um, wall stone set on the side down here on the lower right. Uh, they got round posts for this one with some raised planter beds within their area. They got a big uh, garden hose set up to be able to dry it around. So there are, I see what, four, five, six, eight compost bins set up in there. And so everybody has to, does their own composting. And so, yeah, so that's what they uh, yeah. I had up there. So let's uh, take us back to this here. Okay. Okay. Uh Gil, before we go on, also, it's wide family. If you got a bunch of people together who worked hard and some vegetables grow off into you, there are some benefits. Getting vegetables you normally can't grow, that's a good point. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't have experience with certain vegetables. Mm -hmm. And hi, Martha of Old School Prepper. If you saw her greens video, that is really a lifesaver and a time saver. On cooking greens to freeze. Yeah. Uh, Martha says where she lives in, in uh, south of Portland, no community gardens have open space for new gardeners. Her sister's been trying to find space for a couple of years. No joy. 
that's uh, and that's one of the things is you know, um, go back from some of the uh, some experience I have uh, back in uh, Martinez in California. There, um, one of my scouts for his Eagle Project um, did some was to rehab the community garden that was at the middle school um, and redo a uh, uh, watering system and um, do a whole bunch of work on it there. But, you know, there's, and that, 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 that community garden has room to expand. I'm hoping it's expanding this year. I've been back there to check it out. What, um, one of the things that is interesting um, to me is what you, should, what you can do in your own yard if you don't mind giving up your lawn. And um, let me see, I'm going to pull something up here real quick. I hadn't planned on showing this. I'll pull it up here really quick. As fast as my computer will go, that is. <laughs> no problem, Gil. It's coming along slowly here. All right, uh, playlists. Okay, so it's slowly ticking. It's ticking. There we go. All right. So bring this up. Now, most of the work on this, my wife did. So it's not my stuff. It's what she did. I mean, I, I'd help. You know, she want. We had just. I bought the house. We uh, after a couple of years, we put in the uh, front, um, raised, uh, leveled the front yard, put sprinklers in, had nice grass lawn, and for about a couple of years. And then she decided she wanted, you know, she wanted garden space. So um, let me get this thing here going here. All right. So what I have here, let me throw it up here. So this is the video I did on my wife's garden. And so that's the truck loaded up, getting ready to come to Idaho on one of the trips. But this is what she did in the, in the, in the garden, in the front yard. I mean, it's, you know, low to, you know, you know, no grass. She has roses around the outside and she has poppies and other uh, flowers around the outside of it. And then she's got a bunch of tubs inside. Uh, she's got uh, right here, uh, going out of camera view, there was a, a pallet that she has strawberries planted in. She's, uh, all right, get around here. Yeah, uh, that's one of the new raised planter beds my son put in for her for uh, uh, Mother's Day. Uh, she's got borage growing around the, the, the pots that she has the tomatoes in. And she, you know, she, you know, she got these, gets these pots at, um, Either Home Depot or Costco, one of the two. She was getting a bunch I, I of really think, cheap. I think it's Costco. My sister has the same pots. Yeah, you and uh, yeah, and uh, you know she got like four or five of them, and she said told me to go get a couple more. So I got five more for her, and then we got these other other little tub things we've had, and a little planter she's collected over the years, just loaded with all sorts of stuff going up. And she's got, um, I think that's rosemary right there in front of us. Right. Um, yeah, that was rosemary. Also, did you add to drill holes in your planters, the big tub ones from Costco? Yeah. I told my sister, get the ones with the holes in it. What she did, she gave me a bunch. There's no holes on the bottom. So I'm there with a hand drill late at night drilling holes. Yeah, what I, what I used to do, I found it works really great. A step drill for electrician, electricians use to drill into electrical boxes works really quick. Just zzz, and it just drops right on through. I didn't have one. I had the old 12 volt. Yeah. Yeah. She's got strawberries growing all over. She's got straw down to keep the weeds down. She's got stuff hanging from the Chautauqua tree. Uh, she's got tons and tons of stuff there. And this is just what was put in the front yard. Yeah. Kay Kaylin. Yeah. A lot of the, uh, uh, you know, you know, the, the, the hedge across the front, the roses on the side, yeah, and there's flowers in amongst the uh, the plants as well. As you can see here, uh, some flowers and stuff. Right, and gradually. Then she, yeah. And then she has um, um, columbine and some other stuff, and a bunch more strawberries down in there. 
and then she has some shelves in the background there um uh, growing up against the uh, chitalpa tree with all her uh cactus and stuff on it and so yeah strawberries just you know going wild you know I've, we've already cleaned the strawberries out two or three times when i shot this so these are new you know keep on growing but yeah this is what she did in the front yard you don't got to have grass you yep. know lawn is a a luxury. I don't, a luxury you really don't need <clears throat> and the uh there's a lot of different things you can do let's see here okay some hey, there's the sunflowers those some of those sunflowers are 12 feet tall and then down the ground on the bottom uh, and, the, and some of the tubs there's other stuff growing on let's see if we get around to the backyard here maybe it looks good yeah she got straw and even on this on the side driveway which we don't use anymore uh, we got a redwood tree planted, but uh, she has the blueberries, <laughs> the raspberries growing out there in the tub. Squash. Yeah, squash. Um, actually, uh, those that's a um, cup. Uh, there was uh, some spaghetti squash and some cupcake squash oh, that cool. she got. And then she has a pump, uh, pump little bit mi miniature pumpkins growing in a big pumpkin pot. <laughs> but, yeah, so she set up. Uh, and we, uh, hidden behind the uh, Mandina domesticus or heavenly bamboo is a big lemon tree. You yeah, want some lemons? <laughs> that tree produces more friggin' lemons than you can. You know, we're always giving lemons away. She'll put buckets of lemons down at the street for people to pick up and a bunch of bags. I don't have got, that pro problem. And <laughs> in the side yard, we got grapes growing, all sorts of different grapes. We have no grass on the in the lawn at all. Oh, cool! And and we have some um, hanging beans. No, um, wisteria. Oh, okay. And she has a couple. You know, this is under the wisteria where she does all her um, seed, seedling and stuff. You know, because the wisteria protects it from the frost. Right. And then we got uh, all right. This this uh, tr that tree there. Yep. Uh, may come up later this summer. It may be next summer. That, that uh, apric apricot tree. She's got two cool. apple trees in the backyard. Um, Granny Smith and Fuji. More grapes in the background back there. And she's got you know everything is just packed in full, um, either flowers or food. And in, my, in amongst the flowers, she has food hidden. <laughs> This is uh, not in Idaho. This is the house in California, in Rich. Um, she's still there while I'm trying to get the Idaho property going. We will, have, we will have lemons and oranges in Idaho. We just have them in, the, in those uh, IBC uh, totes I was doing. In the short ones, we'll have them that. I'll just pick it up with the forks on the, on the, on the tractor and put them inside the uh, shop for our wintertime under you know, some lights in there to... Uh, keep them nice and warm but look at, look at the apricots we're pulling off i pulled off the tree that we lodged apricots all over the place and then we got uh meyer lemons and um um several different types of oranges um nectarines cherry trees this this little orchard here is packed solid you can't walk through there. You have to crawl through between the trees to get stuff. <laughs> oh, but that's good, good Jill. And yeah. also, folks, this is Northern California. Yeah. I mean, this this is one of uh, I'll, I'll race. Uh, um, uh, okay, let me stop. Uh, it's called, um, you hear people talk about the, uh, the wiki tubs and stuff, mm -hmm. using the five-gallon buckets and some 15-gallon buckets. Well, this is a this is a 150 gallon wiki tub, and we've been using it mm, 12 years. <laughs> so it's been around for quite a while. My 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 mom used to do do, do do that stuff before they called them wiki tubs. So, but yeah, there's a lot of different things we have, you know, plants and stuff, and you, you can do this. You know, it's a nice area to just go out and sit and relax in. Yeah, you don't have to have a grass to do stuff. No. Also, you save on water too. And oh that, yeah. 
Another thing we have to pull up on the community garden discussion. Here we have two growing seasons because I'm in the desert. Mm -hmm. So we have water restriction. And from now until August, some of our community gardens have to shut down. We don't have that much water. Yeah. Hey, they're all, all the water's going to the golf courses down there in Southern California. True. They're pumping up over the hill away from you, down into uh, L.A., Beverly Hills. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Malibu. We're still, hey, we're so mad at Bakersfield for stealing the Kern River from us. Yeah. It used to go through our area. Now it's, yeah, yeah. it's like, you know the legend of Bakersfield, and I can't discuss it because we have polite company, and I'm yep. eating, and I'm spitting food on the camera. Because Bakersfield is not a real community. Standard oil, pick it up. Yeah, yep. we do have win uh, window boxes uh, off the off the master bedroom, and yes, she grows some stuff in there. And in the one in the one row, sewing room that um, faces the uh, the orange trees and the lemon trees has a big four foot by six foot window in it, and she has shelves set up in there, and that's where she was uh, doing her um, seed uh, a lot of her seeds really early this year. Yes, uh, okay. yeah, pr the prickly pear cactus is something that you know. Uh, is a desert thing. I know Reed's talked about that too. Oh, so West in. does too. Mm -hmm. There's four kinds of prickly cactus. And West's area in Texas, we have the purple kind. The trouble with that one is you cannot di digest the seeds. You eat them and you poo and you got a prickly care, uh, bleh, prickly pear cactus growing up where you pooed last year and it's growing up six foot. Yeah. But they're really good. Uh, ones in my area are the, the old Spanish conquistador ones. Mm -hmm. And they're more of a yellow fruit inside. It's more pinkish instead of purple. Yeah. And when you cut it open, and this is important, folks, make sure you burn off the micro spines. Yeah. I have a few people to, it's like eating an apple. I'm looking at them. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of those cactus and stuff, uh, the big, the big flat, you know, your standard, everyone thinks the big flat one and stuff. Um, no, a, friend no of, a friend of mine used to grill that up, cook yeah, it on called, the grill. Yeah, it's called nopalis. Mm -hmm. It's the, the paddle, uh, paddle shape yeah. cactus. You can pickle it, you can fry it, you can put it on the grill. And some people I know even eat it raw. So. <laughs> It's like wow, yeah. Uh, the uh, um, that one is also very good if you're in the desert. You see that you can uh, you take it and you uh, cut the one end off a little bit and you start uh, pushing down gently with a rock, not to break the skin, but to break up the insides. And you can suck the uh, the water out of it. Yep. Now you got to be careful on cactus. I tell a lot of people all oh, those horrible cowboy movies. Yeah. I do that in real life because there's six barrel cactuses out here. Yeah. If you did that, we'll find a little skeleton next to the damaged barrel cactus because one of them's highly poisonous. Yeah, and, uh, like in the movie, we'll cut off the top and drink the fluid. Yeah, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta know your uh, your edible cactuses, <clears throat> which is really funny because I think uh, one summer ago we found. Some guy did that, and he died, bloated, and the buzzards got him. Yeah, Kalen has a very, you know, there are books out there. There are plenty of books out there. You know, hey, Amazon has tons of uh, e-books on it, too. Right, but the best thing to do is take a course and have somebody professionally show you which one's safe to eat and which one's dangerous to eat. Yeah. Because I harped on, who was it? Uh, prepare uh, bleh, pre uh, this is why Japanese don't put keys in their languages uh, prepper pin uh, prepper princess okay okay she grabbed some kind of weird it tastes like marshmallows you don't stick anything in your mouth that tastes like marshmallows 
you don't know what kind of species of plant about it. Yeah. She was chewing on it. I, I could say, oops, she's getting high. I think it's re relative to the nightshade family. Oh, it's like dill or marshmallow. And she tripped out for about 20 minutes. That's always fun. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's um, – if you check around in your air in your area, check with if your if your media area doesn't have any, and they got city parks, and a lot and it's not, a lot of city park is all nice luscious grass, and nobody's doing anything with it. Talk to the city council about taking part of that area and turn it into a community garden, especially during this time, because if they have community gardens, and they can even I've <laughs> seen things where they set up community gardens where they set up a schedule because of the red dragon that uh, let me pull uh, oh like each one of these plots here behind us you know like every other one in this row and every other one in the next row gets done on Monday then they switch on Tuesday and the other ones and then the ones they go to the next rows and they switch around so basically you have two days a week that you can work your garden or they do it. They, you have like uh, Tuesday. You have Tuesday morning and Thursday evening to go work your work your plot. It depends right. on how, how many. They, and that way, they they maintain social distancing or public distancing, as the smart people say. Right. If you kind of notice how the plot set up, they're about six foot apart, right, Gil? Right. Well, this this looks like they're only four foot apart. You know, that's that's, still, yeah, that's, that's still yeah, that's still. In an outdoor area, and if you're wearing a mask, that's plenty of room in an outdoor area like that. But uh, so, yeah, there are some places that our community gardens are setting up a, an actual schedule when you're allowed to come in and work. But it's um, it's something that you know, if you think that's something that you need to do, you know, check into it. You may yeah. be able to surprise. And things like I said, if you're if there's a lack of gardens, like um, Martha was saying there in south of uh, portland a lack of uh gardens you know because they're all packed full already talk to the city council get a lot of people you know writing the city council and well yep, there we have we have dave coming here hey dave hey right. you know talk to the city council about adding more community gardens that are owned by the city and uh the water is provided by the city and then, um, and also make sure that they put them near bus routes, like Kaylin yep. said, near bus routes, so people can ride, take the bus to the community garden and back. Right. And folks, make sure that it's a square foot garden and you don't need heavy tools because some community gardens in Europe need heavy tools and they have allotment house. It's a little building where they lock up the tool. Yeah. If you're on a bus, it's a little hard to carry a hole, a shovel, a pick. You know, yeah. excuse me, I'm going to the community gardens across that thing. I got to carry 50 foot of hose. Yeah. Hand well, tools. That's what I liked about the one uh, picture here. Let's see if I can bring it back up here real quick. This one here. Yeah. Let me go ahead and uh, enlarge that and bring it back up here. This one here, see that big hose they have set up there, and yeah. a hose down there, and a hose down there, and it's probably a hose right out of camera camera shot to the right as well. That um, the you know they are you know they are provided either by the people they get together and you know buy stuff for it, or if this is owned by a housing um uh, an apartment complex, you know they can have dues for that, or if it's a owned by the city, the city may provide certain things for them. Well, that's good. But the thing is, though, you got to figure out, all right, like you're saying, you know, keep going, keep going that distance, is it worth it for me to go there? You know, if I have, if, you know, can, can I do it to my yard what Gil's wife did to his yard, tear out the lawns and put in garden? Or, you know, do I... Um, I'm in an apartment building and I need to, you know, I have no way of growing in, in my place. So if you're like Dave, you know, he has north facing windows. It's very hard to, very few things he can grow in there. And, you know, 
fight, you know, fight getting a community gardens put in, especially with what's going to be happening here. Yeah, you know, it's a little late in the season now to be doing it uh, in some areas, but you know, there are some there are some crops that grow fast. But you know, a community garden, in my opinion, and I could be totally wrong, folks. You know, I think that is a very good thing. And not only does it uh, uh, provide extra food, you get to know your neighbors with yep. a common interest other than booze, drugs, football. Uh, <laughs> uh, I learned a lot of stuff from community gardens. Here we have four projects. Two of them are for grade schools. That's all the 4-H guys. Mm-hmm. And they help out the little kids to plant vegetables in their little square foot. And they water and treat it. And it's their own. If they don't want to eat the vegetables they grow, they donate it to the food bank. Yeah. See, I'm clown smart. Also, that's something that the elderly can do, the other two community gardens. But during the summertime from now until September, we have to close everything down because our our little towns around here, we have water restriction. And last year, two of our towns, the wells went dry. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you know, I, having been born and raised in California, that is a late developing culture thing with a certain political party who's Stealing the water from the from the agricultural areas and shipping it down to the golf courses and the other fun stuff down there in Beverly Hills. Yeah, uh, I know who it Orlando is. Bat, East, Newport, but yeah, yeah, uh huh. But we anyways, have a yeah. Dart board and we throw darts at them at the dairy. Yeah. We hate their guts. Yeah, but you know, it's uh, it's really you know, you know. That water water rights is, is a problem for um, Southwest um, states. Yeah. So you, uh, I don't know if Dave knows it, but uh, Gil, you you heard from your grandparents about the water wars we had out here in California. We were throwing dynamites and shooting people with thirty thirties on both sides: farmers, ranchers, sheepmen versus L.A. and they. I think Jack Nicholson did a movie on that, right? Um, I'm not sure. It may, may have been. But yeah, I, I remember, you know, there, there was, there's been a lot of stuff, uh, you know, you know, farmers and stuff blowing up the, the canal ditches and blowing them open and stuff, you know, from, you know, because they were sending so much water south and ignoring the farmers at all. And it took, it took a, quite a bit for the, um, the uh, bureaucrats to go, oh, you mean we got to pay attention to these people? Yeah, that was after the Hood incident where yeah. people were taking Remington 8 and used BRs in the 20, and they were shooting at the LA Water District where they're trying to build the tunnels to pump in all that water. Yeah. Enough. They even hired a biplane to throw bombs at them. That how bad it got. They called in the National Guard. If you look at hook, the hood pumping station, there's several areas on that mountain, just big holes. That's people checking 25 pound homemade dynamite bombs out of a biplane onto somebody who I won't mention who helped build Bakersfield. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, uh, most of the other, rest of the country, though, doesn't have, I believe, and I could be wrong again doesn't have the water problems that California and Arizona does. Oh, Arizona screwed. Yeah. You know, the, the Colorado River runs through Arizona, but they get very little water out of it because Las Vegas, you know, got the federal government to say all this water belongs to Las Vegas and Southern California got all this water belong to them. And Mexico says, hey, wait a minute. We need some of that water. Right. And what Arizona gets horribly if you live on an Indian reservation, I have friends who are Apaches, Hopis, and Zumas, they're mad as hell because people don't know it. I know Dave knows it. I think Gil knows it. Back in the 60s and 70s, what were they doing out there? It's not the bit in those guys digging up graves to bury people from Las Vegas. It was the federal government. 
And yeah. I won't go down that rabbit hole because we all know I see this water glowing in the dark. Yeah. Never. Yeah, that, that was some of the some of the some of the uh the mushrooms that never made it to the surface that were planted underground and went <sighs> but yeah. But you know, you know, there's I'm like saying, you know, other than California well, Nevada. Oh, Nevada has another problem with its wet water rights. To have forgot about that, but you can't just go out and drill a well on your property. You know, the state says no. The all the water belongs to us. Right, but, but the bad thing about Nevada, Gil, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Northern Nevada don't want to share with Southern Nevada because they are. I mean, they're getting boiling points. You're going to see another civil war in Nevada. Where everybody in North Nevada is going to try to kill everybody in South Nevada. Yeah, but uh, you know, well, other kind, other areas like you know, you know, around around here, there's not not any problem with wa uh, water. No water shortages here. Um, Washington, Oregon, as uh, far as I know, they don't have any problems with water. Um, Nebraska, Oklahoma, you know, Texas. Well, <laughs> Does Texas have problems with water shortages? Uh, if you're on the west side. Okay, yeah. yeah. East side, it's like Louisiana. It's got pythons, gators, swamps. Yeah, they got it all, yeah. American rat, rat things. Because I have a nephew who lives out there, and he says, those damn things chew through our canals, Uncle Alan. You know, it's yeah. with the sea. Uh, it came from Louisiana, those big rat things. Yeah. Um, Dave, do you remember that word? Mm -mm. You know, it's from South America. It looks like a pig. Yeah. Any pig? Do you know how much damage those things cause? A lot. Copy barrows. That's, what That's it. We're looking for. That's yeah. what Dave said. I wish I had Dave's water here. It's no, like, you don't. No, you don't. Well, I know. It's full of brown stuff. The water here is so doggone hard. The only thing that gets me feeling clean is soap from Julie. <laughs> no, I, I've actually I've actually did a test uh, with a falufa, and you know when you put regular soap and regular water with a falufa, it's near impossible to rinse all the soap out of it. Yeah, with that soap from Julie, no issues. It runs right out of it. You yep. really rinse it out, and that falufa is completely clean. No, I'm a desert kid. When you turn on the tap in the house and you see green and brown water come out of it, you kind of get a little mad, and you know your well went dry. Uh-huh. Uh, and they're talking about what that um that animal. The tria. The tria. Yeah. Nutria is the other word for this horrible things. Yeah. But the, you know, the thing is that I like um the idea of a community garden is that it helps build a community. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the only now now we talk about all the good stuff about you know well mostly good stuff about community garden the bad stuff about a community garden oh you had to go there didn't you and what pops into my my mind is the smart ass punks that hop the fence and steal all the food okay right. or the slackers. Or the homeless people who set up camps in one of them. We had one for the old people. We had to clean twice because we had four tents set up. <clears throat> yeah. Me. I get choked up because it's a, like all right, what you have in the background. Nice, beautiful garden. Everything's set up. Next week we come back, there's four tents in there. And there's families and people living in a community garden. Yeah. That drives me nuts. Yeah. And it's going to get worse. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, if, you know, thing is, so depending on your community, if you, you know, if you guys work together, if you guys need to have a community garden um, and you think it's going to be for what you're going to need, it's going to take, it may, you know, unless you have one you can join that's already established. But like uh, Martha was saying, most of the ones up there in Oregon are they're packed full already, not taking anybody new. Right. Um, you know, you're gonna have to get the city or the county to set up some new set up some where you can uh, actually get in there and work on it. 
and also make sure it has a fence around it. We had to put in a security guard in one of our elderly people community garden because we used to have a lot of homeless. I won't say which town because a man I'm yeah. not to have a stroke comes up in the winter and tries to vacation in our elderly people's community garden. Put yeah. in a security guard. That's just Hello, I swear to God. Yeah. A stroke. Hi, Kathy. Hey, hey Kathy. Yeah. Yeah, once Here's again, I want to apologize to everybody that there was a thing on uh from it saying it was supposed to start at eight. The uh it's usually uh StreamYard sets you know puts it out is starting in a half an hour. Well it kicked it out an hour and a half. So when I adjusted the minutes, I forgot that I didn't realize I had to adjust the hour. So it kind of screwed me up on the start time. It's all right. Old school. Um, good question there, Martha. I know the one, uh, you know, it depends on what, which ones you're at. Um, some of them are just open to the public. You come in, you, you get a space, you reserve it, and you at the end of the year, you got to let them know whether you want that space again next year. Of course, anybody who's put, putting soil amendments into it is going to want it next year, and they go year after year. Um, it's done as a community service. Right. Um, some of them are, it depends. I've heard ones that you rent space, and they're, you know, they have an eight foot chain link fence around it, and, you know, so it has what stuff that comes with it. The one that right. was uh, closest to me here um, was in the town called. Mason, that was the closest one to where I'm at that I'm aware of. And it was up for, I don't know, six, seven years. And then somebody came in and bought the land and put a damn industrial complex there. Right. So the yeah. community garden, which was about eight acres total, completely disappeared. Uh, that's sad, sad day. <clears throat> now, in Over Europe, us. Japan, they do have feet because those are allotments in Europe, uh, like England. Yeah. You have an allotment fee for a year that you pay that's including security, outbuilding, plumbing, everything else. Yeah. And you pay that allotment fee. And then you get your little space and everything. Yeah. And if you need uh, tools and services, they can offer at a cut rate price. Also, some places in the United States, it pays for the fence and security. Yeah. Guy watches over at night so you don't have what we had last year. I'm getting choked up and losing my voice. Of certain guests that are jobless and living in the community garden. Yeah, I wish they'd put one near me. I'd go stay in security at night. Yeah. The uh, I know I know some of the ones in California that are owned, that the, where the land is owned by the uh, cities or the county. Um, they will charge a minimal fee for water. Hey, Butch. Hey, Butch. Hey, boy. And so, um, yeah, some some of them is there if it's on city or county owned land, you know, they will uh, charge you know minimal minimal uh, fees for it. Um, there are some that are owned by um, apartment complexes and HMOs and stuff like that, um, and they run the gambit on prices or however they do it. Some are some of some do it for free, you know. The apartment complex is, oh, we're turning our, our our green our green lawn area here into a community garden, you know, yada yada yada. Um, anybody can do it. You just got to reserve a space. See, I mean, there's enough property here on this complex to put a two acre plot, till it up. It's right next to a creek, so water's not an issue. Um, but they won't do it. Yeah, and that's uh. That's a, a federally owned complex mm -hmm. or state, federal. It's fun. Yeah, but yeah. Have, who's not allowing your gardens in there? Yeah. It's the I'm not going to talk about that party because I'm almost lost my voice right now. Yeah. So there are a lot of there are a lot of options out there, but getting those options to work may take a lot of work. Yeah. Not um, work in the garden. <laughs> yeah, um, it may you know, like you know, I'm not to be not to be uh, punny here, but um, 
it, you know, you may need a grassroot effort to get your community garden in. Churches are good for that. Now we yeah. have oh yes. Go ahead. Um, one of the, uh, two of the churches back in Martinez have community garden plots on them. I totally forgot about that. All right, our our Spanish church here, uh, patron saint Lupe. It's a Guadalupe. Spanish. Guadalupe, that's it. They have a big community garden. It's well maintained. They have buildings. They have security. People go in there. It, they have plots. They have the whole works. It's the church. It's not run by the Catholic Church. It's run by, let's see. I can't pronounce it in Spanish. And I think everybody understands broken Japanese. So anyway, yeah, it's gated. It's beautiful. <laughs> I wish I had, know how to use my cell phone. Yeah. So that yeah, you know, that's something that you know, you know to check into with the churches around where you at. If there's is not a community garden, check with the church and see if uh there if they have land or gra grass area out back or whatever that you know they can turn into a community garden. Yeah, I need. I keep forgetting to ask the pastor next to me because I like some of you have seen. I actually live right next to a church. Yeah, I mean, cool. Right, literally, right <laughs> over there. I can throw a rock and hit it. Don't. And, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know what? I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to get in trouble with the FBI. Have. Oh. Oh, Kaylin. Good, good, good point too. Yeah, because there, um, there is a, um. St. Catherine's Church in Martinez has a big school, and they got some open space there as well. And uh, one of the churches um, not too far from uh, my house in California, um, Morello Hills Christian School, has uh, are doing a little, you know, community garden plot in the back of it there, and part of it is part of the daycare uh, preschool they run there. So the kids have a little go out there and they have a lot and they get to play in the dirt and plant little stuff and they learn to plant stuff. That's good. I I'm do sorry, Kathy. People. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear him, Kathy? Yeah. Hello. Dave's right down there. <laughs> I've got to sing yeah. back out and I'm trying to talk in a nice voice. I don't want to talk much louder. Yeah. Because then everybody else's ears will go, ah. <laughs> but uh whoops got lowered the mic uh if if you do have community gardens and you have extra produce be sure to hook up with your local food bank so it doesn't go into the compost bin and it gets spread out to the communities i know the church one of the lady of guadalupe they always bring to the food bank and they get lemons oranges Strawberries. They're, right now, we're finishing up strawberries, and we're doing green beans, bell peppers, hot peppers. I don't want to see another hot pepper in my life. I thought it was in. I thought it was uh, California long green. No, it wasn't because I ate the cheese stuffed one, and it's like, yeah, the uh, the 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 radishes. Um, uh, there are certain carrots that grow fast. They don't grow deep, big, but they grow, you know, they're small carrots that grow fast. Um, there's some other root crops that grow really fast that, um, you know, kids, kids will like and stuff. Um, oh, interesting. So on my, on my garden here, the, th the, th uh, the things that are growing the best are the lettuces and the beets. <laughs> Those are my raised planter beds. The the um, Grand Rapids lessing is packed solid, and there's oh uh, chili, yeah, seven quarts, homemade, mm, good. Woo. And the uh, the uh, romaine lettuce is going to, going to town, and the uh, Detroit red beets are going to town, and my daughter has already harvested her. Um, uh, I know, I know they harvested a bunch of their spinach. They, uh, I mean, just totally cleared out the area 
And I, she's got had downstairs, I think it was the bok choy she's already harvested. Okay. And then there's um, something else begins with a K. Kale? Not kale. Um, Kohlrabi? Asian, kohlrabi. Mm, good stuff. Eat and so, um, yeah, they've been, they've been pulling a lot of stuff <laughs> in too. And... Um, Okay, hang on here. Oh, Rustic Traditions, hey. Hey, Rustic. And answer uh, uh, Kathy's question, wasn't jalapenos though or probenmos? And if you eat a cheese-filled one, trust me, it goes in hot, goes out hot. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, so stuff you donate, anything you donate, uh, to uh, you get you can do it as a as a donation on your taxes. Mm -hmm. Yep, just keep the receipt. Yeah. The I, th I you know just you know I hadn't planned it going this way, but I think it's a great idea. I was hoping for a great idea to I like this to come about churches and stuff. You know, even if you have your own garden, talk to your church about setting up a plot or whatever for those that don't have a garden area right and also people on carrots you can eat the green tops i have to show that over and over again to people it's like oh we usually feed it to the rabbits or throw it in our compost pile and i'm looking at them they don't do that it's like this is why yeah. i'm losing his voice yeah well uh you know if you have right now my wife is having a problem with, with all i mean she's been um, Be right back. she's been blanching and freezing spinach, up, you know, just tons of it and Swiss chard, the same thing. And she's, and she says she's, she says she's turning into a rabbit with all the lettuce and stuff she's growing. It's just going nuts right now this year. And, um, uh, yeah. Did you see, uh, Martha old school peppers video with that little machine? spinner? Yes. Yeah. And, um, actually. I added that to, I found, I think I found the, the one she was using. Um, and I added it to my um, wish list on Amazon. Let's see it here. Come on. It's going to, there we go. Right there. Boom, boom. And I found, uh, uh, let's see, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, I found another one. Uh, they're, they're called laundry uh, spinners. You know, to, to spin the water out of the laundry. But come on. Give me the list. There we go. Finally I'm old me school. List. I put it in cheesecloth and hands. Yeah. It's great for like. Okay. So go to this one here. All right. So I, I, I found. Come on. Let's go. Share. Come on, there it goes. Yep. So I found uh, the you know the, it's one of these two because one is um, twenty it's inches tall one. by fourteen inches wide. The other one is eighteen inches tall by thirteen inches wide. No, I think I think right it's, yeah, yeah. But then I also found this other one, uh, which the, the, both these do fifteen hundred RPM. This top one does thirty two hundred RPM. Guaranteed to dry it. <laughs> But yeah, so um, but yeah, you know, so if you want to, you know, like she got she got lucky and found hers at a um, thrift store, I believe it was. Yeah, on the problem, uh, Wyatt Farms with the lettuce spinners. If you put hot food in there, uh, the plastic won't hold up. Yeah, and what I, what I liked about um, uh, she hers the uh, the this top one here, this top one. Let me go ahead and open it up. What's neat about it, come on, let's go. There it goes. It's starting to thing spinning. There we go. Let me show you the inside of it. Uh, which one is it here? Uh, third one. Uh, no. Is this the third one from the bottom? Third, this one here. Stainless okay. steel. As a stainless steel uh, insert. So uh, you can put, you know, it's not going to be damaged by the, uh, by hot. So that was that one there. Where's the other? And it, it, so looking down it, so that's looking down into the uh, the stainless there steel part of it. Yeah. So yeah, it's got um, 
but this one is hundred and uh sixty dollars almost but it's got free shipping so but yeah so um good, for your, even with clothes yeah just make sure you clean it out so you don't get soap yeah now this one here this is the the small one a little you know but it's the same you know the same brand that uh martha had on uh, its old school preppers video today so uh this is the small version countertop and it has the suction cups on it and you really can't tell much of a difference between it and the big version just that it's a little bit it's you know, a couple inches taller but uh, yeah, this is the one that uh, she was using, and I like her idea of putting a pillowcase in there. Except what I would do, I would cut the cut them make one make a little bag just the size just a little you know the same diameter but just a little bit taller to put it in there. But using what she did was really really slick, really neat, and you know ingenious using the uh, the, right. the pillowcase to do it. I prefer probably a, a what you might call it, um, a Muslim type um, cheesecloth that you make a pouch. Yeah. And put it in there. That'd be a lot easier to clean, and you don't know what's some of these pillowcases. You got have no idea what's they're made of. Yeah. And you don't want the aftertaste like, mm, I smell pagonias, you know. <laughs> it, yeah. But you didn't put pagonias in there. Yeah. So yeah, you know. So. Um... For stuff you grow in your garden, if you wind up growing, you know, spinach can grow pro prolific. Lettuces grow pro prolific. But, you know, that's one way to uh, to take your food and, you know, blanch it. Like, watch watch your video. Um, you know, old school preppers video. So, and I'm going to see if, uh, if, I'm not sure if Kathy's still in. I'm going to see if I can beat her to the video. You have to see the video. In rich yeah. Fuji. Me, I don't do any machine. I put it in a large towel like cheesecloth and I hand squeeze mine. Yeah, right, I'm going to go. Muscle. Uh oh. Uh oh, we run. lost Gil. He ran away. I think it's those spinner guys that are chasing him down. I'm back. I hit the wrong button. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Now you're going, Mr. Roboto. Yep, he's froze. Uh -huh. yep. yep. He's turning into Max Headroom again. But like I said, they talked to your pastor about using church land. Yeah, am I back to, yet? But, yeah, you're back. Okay. Um, all right, let me do this here. I'm going to bring it up here real quick. This is going to work. Hey, Palmetto. Hey, Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Okay, so back over here to StreamYard. This is the link to uh, Martha's video, Old School Preppers, on um, free. It's called freeze, uh, uh, Freezing Greens How To with a Twist. And literally, oh, I mean, yeah, literally with a twist. And she goes through and shows. Doo -doo -doo, come on. Uh, I got to resh reshare screen since I kicked myself out. <laughs> there we go. So, she, you know, she goes through. She went and picked it. She's got all this different stuff she picked, spinach and stuff. She's got, uh, every, you know, she's got it. She's shown how, how you got to trim it and everything. Where did we go here? And then and she has a blanching pot, right? Blanching there. pot, and then she has the cooling pot, the you know the, <coughs> the thing where you go put ice in it to cool it down immediately. And there's her spinner right there, ready to go. So big enough to put a small child in. I'm just saying it's big enough to put a small kid in. No, it's big infant. No, 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 no infants, no. no. That's what I'm saying. It's not that big. Next door to me, we can't do that to infants. Yeah, it's only it's only uh, you know, I say it's not that big, it's like six inches on the inside. Oh, well. But yeah, good idea for a cat then. 
Oh, yeah. Anyway, oh, Cecilia, hey. Hey, Cecilia. And so, yeah, she goes through and she shows how to do everything, prepping it. And so, yeah. Anyways, yeah, so good video to go watch on it. All right. <laughs> And Kathy has it up as well. Cool. But yeah, so ch check that out. Um, one of the uh, interesting things, you know, my mom used to uh, blanch the vegetables. She used to do mainly uh, the, green, the green beans and stuff. I haven't had one of those. It's not boiled, folks. Yeah. I haven't had one of those containers in my house since I was a kid. Yeah. Well, yeah I, got, I, got, I got a big, huge one, too. I got to pick up and bring up from California up here. It's what it's what we used to can using the uh, water bath, the uh, half gallon right. jars. Butch is looking at a used freeze dryer. Awesome. Cool. Make check out the if Butch if you're doing the used freeze dryer, check the motors and check the lines because if you don't, you're going to have oil leakage all over inside the freeze. Provided us an oilless. Can I ask all those here, please? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do believe uh, Anthony's asking for his wife. Okay, we're all praying. Prayers are never hard to ask for. Yeah. Prayers are free. They're easy. Yeah. And when said with a humble heart, they're usually answered. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, God only has three answers. Yes, not now. Or I have a better plan. <laughs> or if he's mad at you, no. The lightning That's bolt. Usually, that usually the, that is a better plan. No, the lightning bolt is, you idiot, you did not listen. I have warned you and warned you and warned you. You're acting <laughs> just like Israel did way back when. It's punishment time. Right, like Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh -huh. Oh, you mean you like, like San Francisco and Berkeley? Yeah. Couldn't happen to two extra cities. I mean, um. <laughs> Hey, now Georgia. Tell you what, um, in in the, in the San Francisco Bay Area, the rapid transit system system is called BART, Bay Area Rapid Transit System. Mm -hmm. San Francisco is called Babylon on the Bay. Uh, on um, Berkeley's called Babylon by the Bay, and um, Walnut Creek's called Babylon by BART. <laughs> you mean BART? No, BART, B A R T. You no, gotta ride. You gotta I, ride. The, you gotta ride the Bart train to, from San Francisco to get to Walnut Creek. Yeah, I know, but we always call it Bart because a couple of years it wasn't pleasant riding in one of those. Oh things. yeah, yeah. So, um, on your community gardens or whatever, church. If, if there's not one in the area, talk to your local churches. Talk to your city. If you live, live, if there's county area that's a uh, property that's not being used, talk to your county commissioner, supervisor, whatever they're called in your in your particular county. Talk to them and don't talk to them alone. Go right. in with a group of people. You know, be you know, a group put, of people. No, no. Start out with just three or four. We represent this coalition. We'd like you to this. My embarrassment. Then go and start. You know, go, you know, uh, using uh, social media to build it. And dress Just be careful of the people you share your social media with right now. Yeah. Because it could go the way of the Jefferson Monument if you're not careful. Yeah. And also, uh, what's my call? Dress normally. You don't want to show up there in printed T-shirts, mohawks, and bad yeah. Yeah, Come on. I wanted to go with a mohawk. Yeah, I wanted to go, go I wanted to go dressed like uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Green Jeans. Nope. See, yeah, I, it's I a blazer dress. and a tie. I want to go if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna dress just like my Native American ancestry did. No God, hell no. <laughs> I'm gonna get a mohawk. I'll get a headdress. Oh put on the war paint and dare anybody yeah. to cross the line. All right. So and yeah, wearing a long cloth. Yeah. That'd be great, Dave. Okay, so yeah, Anthony's wife is having problems with pregnancy. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So, guys, yeah, Anthony definitely and his wife definitely need your prayers. 
Oh, cool. YMCA. Now they're all going to say, oh, YMCA, uh, Salvation Army, uh, Boys Club, Girls Club of America, uh, other organizations to check with. Yeah. Also 4-H, too. 4-H. And what's the other one besides 4-H? It's similar. Um, uh, FFA, Future Farmers Future. of America. Yes. You're talking to a country boy here. I yeah. grew up with these groups. Well, I had, I had several of my scouts that were in both FFA and 4-H. So they had, you know, one night one night they had scouts, one night they had 4-H, another night they had FFA. There's also a third group, but I can't remember their name. I just yeah blanked out on them guys. But it's I forget. It's a more a religious yeah. version. It's for the Memon Mennonite. And Amish. Mennonite and Amish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, guys. I'm gonna run this really really quick one more time. Uh, to show, just show you different exam, example, little bit, blah, 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 different examples. You can learn to talk someday, I promise. You get my tongue untied. Uh. All right, so, so here's one set up near an apartment complex. Really nice. Here's one, you know, I'm not sure what 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 building is off to the left. You can tell it's on a, looks like it's on, near a corner lot here. They have a sign in back. I can't read it. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. You know, uh, Parama, Par Parama Moore Community Garden. There's another one. Looks like they took part of the city park and turned it into a garden. Cool. This looks like it's a open air area. Yeah, and this may be this may be over in Europe because it, lo I, I, it looks like the, they're driving on the you know on the left side of the street. That looks like England. Yeah, and so yeah, you got the you know, there's another street you can't see to the right coming towards us. So that's that type. And this one it hasn't it's just a garden area everybody's getting together in. They need to straighten that one up. It's all curvy cockeyed. Yeah, they were making a making like, a they're making a beautiful little walkway through it. Yeah. They're not maximizing their square footage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now this one this one here is maximizing footage. They got little walkways between some of them here. And the big walkway, little walkways, garden hoses. And so yeah, that's what I had for us uh to look at here. But there is a whole bunch more. You just Google community gardens and, bring, and click on images. You'll get an idea <coughs> if you're planning something out. <coughs> so, yeah, community gardens can be a great benefit. And especially if you can get an organization behind the community garden, whether it's the city, the county parks and rec, churches, you know, <laughs> Whatever. Oh, Rotary Club. Hey, that sounds like something the Rotary Club might want to get behind, too. So I know also, the Rotary... I think the uh, Lions do it in certain states. Mm -hmm. Lions is another good organization that mm -hmm. helps out for a community thing. So you have Some a lot of... Some areas the VFW will as well. Yeah. yeah. So you have, a lot, you have options there to get a community garden going in your area. However, a word of warning... Expect to have a little bit of extra work on your plate. You know, everyone's going to start. If you're helping to start it up, you're going to make sure you do it as a community and not you by yourself. Because otherwise, everyone's going to be looking for you. So, oh, Dave throws something up here. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. If nothing else, just go to your Facebook and type in Community Garden and see what pops up. Yeah. Because most everybody here still has Facebook, right? Whether they use it or not, they still have it. Yeah. So Pull there you this. go. There's three. The mileage is off because it thinks I'm somewhere I'm not actually at, but you know, yeah. that's okay. Okay, let me take this back to the top. I'm gonna go back here. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah, because what I did with uh, when I first searched, it came up with uh, uh, community garden, the Jap and then the Japanese friendship garden, and the village community gardens. Uh, so this is uh, the two are uh, are in um, Idaho Falls, and the other one's up uh, past Rigby, getting towards um, Rexburg. The reason why there's not that many community gardens around here, everybody grows. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 all you know, a lot of gr uh, growing stuff all around here. So, but still, there's uh, okay. Just reading what Anthony's putting in there. Hmm. Prayers have been said and sent. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So for your guard, uh, yeah. And that's another thing to consider too. Is like I said in the beginning. For those who didn't catch it, if you have, not everybody has the same size lot plot land. My home in in, Cal in California is a third acre. Where everybody else has quarter acres. You know, when the guy owned the two together, he sold the one off. And he kept an extra extra uh, ten feet over onto the other one, so that's why it, I wound up with a third acre um, across the street from me in California. Guy has two acres. Um, several people around there have two, five, ten. Several there are several several ten acre lots. Um, if you get, and it, it we're that's you know you know Martinez is the county seat. And it's surrounded by big cities. So, uh, you know, Concord, Pleasant Hill and stuff. So, you know, there are, you may find, if you look around, you may find some uh, somebody has land that's just sitting there. Not They're not doing anything with it, but they don't want to sell it. Talk to them. Say, hey. Garden it. Yeah. Hey, can we set up a small community garden here? Hey, community garden, you get to write that part of that off on your tax on your taxes as a donation to the community or what, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah, and it's also a lot better than a homeless camp. Yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I think we covered just about anything. I mean we anything about everything, every, right? everything to deal with here unless somebody has something more. Hey Brastard. Hey Brastard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's um, especially what uh, I mentioned before when I was showing the, the video of look what my wife did to my yard. Uh, I have that 150-gallon um, wiki tub, wiki tank in the backyard. Um, hey, Mama Z. That really saves on the water. Hey, Mama Z. Hey, Mama Z. So, yeah, I mean, with all the ones I have out here, the um, all my uh, uh, raised planter beds, my tanks, my uh, fifty-five barrels cut in half. The only problem I have here right now is that the fifty-five gallon barrels have too much drainage in them. <laughs> so uh, you know, for the corn, I got to keep. You know, the other stuff, tomatoes are loving it. Everything else, the borage, everything else loves it drains just properly for them. But the co experimental corn I put in the in the uh, fifty five gallon barrels cut in half want more water. The ones in the ground are stuff, doing. I told you that stuff you got from the middle of the nation from that experimental company that does drug experiments was a bad idea. I told you don't do that. <laughs> it's gonna when it finally grows, it's gonna start growing. The uh... <laughs> remember, you could send your. Yeah. Surplus food to food banks, so yeah. you don't have any problems with that. But <laughs> yeah, the uh, we since we had you know the, the last rain we had was last Tuesday, so it's been a week. I dig down in the ground out there that much, and I'm hitting moist dirt. So that's the only really good thing about the ground around here is it retains you know, the moisture. But it also retains the morning glory, and it's very alkali. It's it's at um, seven point five. Read Grin Wizard's Guide to Gardening. I yeah, I'm working on it. I'm yeah, I've signed up for uh, 
uh, the it was, it was uh, chip um, chip online or whatever, something like one of the services around here that um, works with the arborists and uh, tree cut trimming companies to um, you know get me free de free delivery of uh, mm. of uh, wood chips. I even said I would I would donate forty dollars a truckload, which the truckloads usually cost if you want to buy a truckload cost two hundred fifty dollars. And but there aren't that many people buying them, and for them to come this far down out of Idaho Falls, that's why they you know they charge. But who knows? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I get any. Also, you check with the uh, county and state. Sometimes they'll run a wood chipper on an old tree, and you get those chips for free because they have yeah. to drop it, and they can't do it in landfills anymore. Because right here, we had a wildfire about forty miles away from town, from. <laughs> A wood chip pile. They piled it so high. Guess what happened? Internal it's heat. Combusted. Yeah, that was really fun. They thought it was from fireworks. No, it's all the uh, wet and rotten wood chips ca catching on fire in our our landfill. I'm like, oh god. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So yeah, if I if I had a dump trailer, I'd go up to uh, actually the Idaho Falls landfill. They have an area where they pile it up and people can, can come get it for free. They'll load it. They have a loader there and they'll load it for you. Courtney, come on down here where I'm at. It passed 100 degree indices today. Heat index broke 100. Yeah, that's why we're praying for uh, for Anthony. Uh, Anthony just said that he had a rain busted a couple of few dams there. Yep. It also busted his tomatoes. If I read yeah. correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of rain and breaking dams, the, uh, let's see if I can find it here real quick. Which one? The Japanese one or the Chinese one? Chinese one. Okay. Um, Wuhan, we all know what Wuhan's for, uh, famous for, raises flood alert uh, as rains battle China. That was yesterday's, uh, China in focus. Oh, here's the here's today's China bus crashes into reservoir, flooding disrupts exams. Hmm. Southern Japan and Philippines have the same problem. Yeah, and Japan is like village disappears. Two hundred years later, they'll find it because once that river goes up, ah. Oh, Anthony. Oh, oh. Uh, he already harvested tomatoes, and the ones that were ones that were split were ripe and almost ripe. They're cooking down, making sauce. Oh, <laughs> yes! And that's the thing too, you know. If you get the uh, type of tomato plants that grow really tall, and you get a um, get go get get a con uh, the concrete wire panels from Home Depot or Lowe's and you make a, bat, a, a tomato cage out of that, that's super strong. That'll support amazing amount of weight and you can grow, you can get a lot of tomatoes off a single plant to make gallons of sauce. But be sure to prune and watch out for mold because yeah. that's a big thing that people don't do. They, they wire it up and they let all this growth comes. Yeah, you got to Pinch out the uh, the suckers, suckers out of it. Yeah, we leave the suckers on, and next thing they're coming to me saying, "I got this powdery stuff all over my plants, Uncle. What we're going to do?" I'm looking at them like, "Where's my flamethrower?" <laughs> yeah, powdery mildew is bad. No kidding. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, you can get there. You pick the right plants for your garden. Like in the bottom right hand right hand corner on the screen here, you see they got how they got the lines. The string in there, marking out their garden for uh, for it. You get some really good intense um, uh, compact Perfect garden gut. there. You get Perfect. a lot, get a lot of foot out of it. Yeah, a lot of foot, a lot of food out of it. Blah, blah, blah. I was gonna say a foot. I can put a foot up there, but I don't think it's gonna do any good. Yeah, <laughs> unless it's up somebody's rear end. Yeah, that'll do some good. Okay. Yeah. Well, folks, uh, we're getting ready to wrap it up here. Um, Tomorrow's Wednesday. Um, I know um, just in time prepping in the afternoon. About two. About two o'clock Mountain Time is running a has a uh, live stream going. Um, Friday, 
I have a Friday night special, and I'm I am going to go there on the Friday night special this time. Talk about the Red Dragon. What you know, what's going on? Round two. Round round Mask. two, or is it actually the peak of round one? <laughs> Because yeah. um, depends on which city you're living in. Yeah, and the thing is, so um, I was reading an, ar- an article. We're now up to eight different uh, strains of it. Yep. And so up. go up two more. Two uh, up to ten now. We're at ten different strains. Okay, so ten different strains. But that's what we're going to be talking about on Friday, eight o'clock Mountain Time. So uh, that's ten Eastern. Nine Central, seven Pacific. Ah, oh, Mama Z's cooking time is at five p.m. Central time, and that's tomorrow. And anybody else have a live stream coming up here in the next couple of days? Not me. I said I probably won't restart mine up again until fall. Yeah, it's gonna be a cold day in hell when house. I start a live stream. <laughs> yeah, you just join everybody else's. <laughs> All right. No, Al doesn't want to have to deal with all the kooks. Yep. Hey, that's why you have mods. The mods stay, sit off there in, in, in the side with their blue wrenches and play whack-a-mole or whack-a-troll. <laughs> no, I'm tired. You know, for the last three days, I've been screaming in Portuguese about mastitis because I don't want to eat drugs on my cow. Yeah. That's all I need, drugged out cow. Yep. Yeah. All right. Garlic cukes. Oh yeah, my yep. my and wife and my mom love those. Don't forget Kaylin's live streams, folks. If you haven't yeah. ever checked out a live stream from Kaylin, she does some really good MRE and other survival yes. food reviews. Yeah. And it's no BS. It's honest, and it will tell you if it tastes like poo or if it tastes good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, folks. So there we go. Uh, All right, folks. Uh, everyone, stay safe. Stay prepared. Stay Get some sort of garden going if you can. If it's just a single pot in the window, uh, growing basil. I'm growing cars. All right. Yeah, you're growing cars. <laughs> a lot of cars. All right, folks. Take care. See you, see you uh, on the next live stream.